Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Bourbon. My name is Steve Akeley. We have a fun event tonight. We are going to be with Distillery 291 as they present some of the products from their portfolio in a series we call Our Portfolio. Uh, should be good stuff. It looks like a nice variety of things here, ranging in proof from 101.7 all the way up to 140.5. Should be good stuff, so I can't wait to try all these. I am a big fan of Distillery 291. I also want to say uh, a big thanks to the Distillery 291 team. Before we even get started here, our friend Danny Kennard uh, unfortunately passed away, and uh, it was really nice. They did a nice post about him. They posted a fundraiser that raised some money for ALS, a, a charity that he supported. So uh, I, I can't say enough of good things about the people of Distillery 291, and they make great whiskey. What a combination that is. So really good people. On that note, I'd like to introduce the guy who started it all, the distiller for that company, Mr. Michael Myers. Hey, Michael, how you doing, man? Great, Steve. Um, really, really good. Thank you very much and very sorry uh, about him passing and, you know, doing whatever we can do to help. So thank you very much. And yeah, he yeah. was such a fan of what you guys did. He, he drove yeah, out there he, from St. Louis more than once uh, yeah. to, to pick up whiskey and be a part of what you guys did. Happy to be there for your 10th anniversary, which was a big deal. And uh, big yeah, deal. yeah, really cool thing that he was able That's to true. be a part of that. And you guys you know, you welcomed in like a like a family member himself. Uh, a lot of the team on the 10th anniversary told me, spent time with him, brought him in. Like, you know, you guys, I'm sure, have a million things going on and, you know, just treated him, you know, behind the scenes and, and he got to hang out with you guys. And then and then I know when he went back, uh, I think it might have been your distiller, invite him over to his house. And uh, and he spent some time trying some things and stuff like that. I mean, what? Uh, that just doesn't happen in any other industry. Uh, this industry is sure. amazing. And, and, and you guys are, you know, above and beyond what most, uh, you know, distillers would even do. So yeah, just good people. So I just want to thank you for that and talk to tell you how much it meant to him in speaking with his his, uh, his wife, Misty. And uh, yeah, it was really something that uh, that they remembered with great fondness and talked about a lot. So that's very cool stuff, man. And wonderful to hear and our pleasure. You know, um, we love we love people when they come that are excited about 291 and um, we'll show if we if we're there and have the time, which we do a lot, or maybe we divert it a little bit to Emily or Eric Jett, you know, yep. the distiller. And, um, but if I'm there, yes, that's what we do. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really great stuff. So, you know, a, a lot of folks know your story, but again, we've got a couple people who haven't even been on any of our events before on this particular one, Michael. And uh, so if you don't mind, you, you know, even though that a, a lot of folks here know it, just tell us a little bit about your background and how you got going with Distillery 291. Yeah, so yeah, I, I tell this story quite a bit. Um, I've been a little rusty lately. I haven't told it as much as I have in the past, but um I was a fashion beauty photographer in New York and 9-11 changed my life, lived three blocks from World Trade, uh, moved to Colorado Springs, Colorado, and, and started commuting back to New York for photography and got to a point where I just needed to do something different for my family and, and make it where I could be home and, you know, and not on, on a plane as much. And so I, um, I was shooting Vanity Fair in New York and flying back and I read an article about um, uh, Stephen Goss who created Hendrix Gin and Sailor Jerry and thought I could uh, brand a whiskey. And then someone said, why don't you try and make it? And I'm from Georgia and they make it in the woods. How hard could it be was my <laughs> thought. Uh. I know that's crazy, but that was my thought. <laughs> and um, and set out to buy a still was too expensive figured out I could build my own. So I designed my own, had it um, built out of photogravure plates, which are flat copper plates. You chemically etch an image, you put ink on the plate, uh, put a piece of paper with it, run, a, run it through the press. You get an ink photograph. I took those seven plates, water jet, cut them in the pattern, and then um, rolled them through a metal roller um, to curve them. And this guy, Al Novak, TIG welded the copper for me and, and created the still, 45 gallon still. And I started in 300 square feet with that, um, making 60 gallons a month. We're now in 26,000 square feet, making 600 gallons a week. Um, over the last 11 years, it's been an amazing journey. You know, I set out to make a Western whiskey, something a bartender would slam on the, 
on the bar and in, in your favorite Western and um, something that was big, bold and beautiful like the state of Colorado, um, rugged, refined, rebellious like me. And, and so I think I've done that. And, and that's the nice thing tonight is uh, we're tasting those whiskeys. Um, the ones I really, I love rye whiskey um, and I wanted to make a rye whiskey uh, that said that about Colorado. So I, I believe I have. Um, and, and it's been an amazing journey. I have an amazing team. They, they really kick ass. And so, but in this, in this process of making a Western whiskey, um, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm a little lost, <laughs> sorry. Um, a lot of things came together for it. And, and so I, before I drank my own whiskey, I love Thomas Handy. Um, so my Mashville loosely is around a Thomas Handy, meaning it's high corn in a rye whiskey um, that creates a sweetness. Um, yeah. There's a lot of things about my story, you know, 291, where does it come from? That's the biggest question usually. And that was my dorm room in college. And, and I moved into that dorm room, not knowing about the gallery, 291. And <clears throat> that gallery was uh, 291 Fifth Avenue. Um, it was Albert Stieglitz, 1907. Before that gallery, they showed photographs and paintings in a salon. He wanted to just show photographs. So he opened this gallery and then I was in Savannah College of Art and Design for art school when I moved into that dorm room, learned of the gallery, and then went to make whiskey um, after a long career in photography. And um, the, the still being out of photogravure plates and then the process of distillation reminded me of the dark room. That's where 291 comes from. So that's a, that's a brief description. Yeah. So, Michael, I, and you know, we talked already about the great team that you have, and you really have, you know, uh, just a team that's firing on all cylinders of great folks. But take us back to the 300 square feet. Uh, you know, you've you get built on, you're ready to, to make your first whiskey. I'm sure it's, at this point, it's just you. So tell us what that was like as you're getting ready to make that first run, what was going through your mind. I know you'd watch some YouTube videos and stuff and prepare yourself, but, you know, tell us through day one what that was like when you're making whiskey. Yeah, so when I when I started this, um, I'd never brewed beer or distilled. Um, what we're drinking tonight, the rye recipe, is my very second experiment, um, my very second recipe. My very first was my bourbon, and that's the bourbon we make daily today. Um, but yeah, I started in 300 square feet by myself. Um, I had September 11th, 2011 was my first finish run. I had done on a tiny ambulance still one small experimental run of the bourbon. Um, it was at that time, the bourbon was 80% corn, 20% malt rye. Um, I took 1% and made it malt barley. So I guess technically it's, it's you know, uh, recipe 1A mm -hmm. um, because I, because <laughs> I took uh, that, and, and it's, so it's 80% corn, 19% malt rye, 1% malt barley. But I started in that space and I was gonna steam heat everything. And this is a funny thing is, um, so I'm looking for a steam generator on the web, right? I'm self-taught from YouTube, from books, from Popcorn Sutton's documentary. Um, and steam generator pops up is for your steam shower in your house. And I'm like, okay. And it said, you know, 400 square feet in an hour of steam. I'm like, okay, 400 square feet room or cubic square feet room. Um, that seems like it'd be hot enough. It's, it's what I can afford, $1,500. So I bought that, hooked it up. And the first time I did a and I have all the notebooks from this, but I, I did a water test on a hot liquor tank that I had built and uh, to see how fast it took to warm up 50 gallons of water. And um, so I it was all hooked up um, with steam coil inside the tank and 
and I pushed the button and it came on and condensate was coming out of, you know, water condensate was coming out of the steam trap, which is normal to keep the steam in there and be efficient. And um, so it's all working. Hour later, it cuts off. <laughs> Damn, walk over there, touch, touch it. It's warm. Everything's good. Hit that button again, comes right back on. I'm like, damn, okay, good. And uh, an hour later, it goes off again. And I'm like, damn, it's a home unit with an automatic off. <laughs> and so for, for two and a half years in that 300 square foot space, my cooks were six hours. Um, I did them twice a day when I was cooking. My strips were um, six hours twice a day to strip. And a finish was 12 to 15 hour run. And I reset that button every 45 minutes. <laughs> so I, I would go out and <laughs> sell whiskey to a liquor store, come back, push the button, go to the next liquor store. Um, I'd go home, cook dinner, push the button, go back home, eat dinner. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, your life's uh, around uh, 45 minute blocks at that point. Yeah. yeah. Everything, everything has to be figured out how you can work it into 45 minute blocks. So yeah, that's, that's fine. And, and the funny thing about that is there's, um, there's a, you know, when you, when the steam turns off, so you've got an hour, right? So 45 minutes, that's why I gave me a 15 minute leeway. But when the steam cuts off, we all know it, um, as it cools, it shrinks and so if you if you're not there in time it will um i didn't have a forget what it's called but a plumbing piece that makes it so it doesn't backflow mm -hmm. um on there but it it would the heat would stop and so it'd cool and it suck that mash back down there it only happened once and um, I literally, it sucked mash into the steam tank. And I took that um, steamer apart, not knowing what it was about or how it, what it, how it really worked. Um, rebuilt it, cleaned it, and put it back together. Taking pictures of it the whole way. You know, the same way I put a, a, a 360 uh, engine in my Dodge, um, I took pictures so I wouldn't forget. Um, and I had never replaced an engine before, but <laughs> yeah. So, but it only happened one time and right. it only needed to happen once. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's try our first whiskey of the evening. This is going to be the, the white dog, the Colorado rye whiskey. So tell us a little bit about what we'll be expecting folks as you're nosing this, please share your nosing notes and then we'll get to tasting it and we'll share our tasting notes all in the chat. If you don't mind, and we'll, we will have live Q and a at the end of the end of the evening tonight. And you can ask questions. Emily can help out uh, during the uh, event. If you have any questions, you can also put them in chat too. So. Oh, she's here. Hi, Emily. Um, so white dog, um, I set out to make um, whiskey. I wanted to make whiskey, um, but I also knew I needed some cash flow or something. So I felt that there was an American white spirit take place of vodka, rum, and tequila, and gin. Um, and that would be American white whiskey. Uh, moonshine for some people. I don't think this is moonshine at all. One, it's, not, it's legal, but other than that, it's, it's made from grain probably old school shine in a sense um but it's called white dog 291 colorado rye whiskey white dog um and i just felt that you know originally i was my bourbon mash bill was going to be it because it was uh the corn has less characteristic to it um the rye has a lot more character to it and and so i i made some um uh, of both the 291 bourbon mash bill that's called 291 fresh and then the rye whiskey white dog and i went to i'd been distilling um i found the notes the other day and and it showed that i had been literally distilling for two weeks and i went up to the colorado distillers guild event at stranahan's and there were about 10 of us there new distillers a um, couple of them walking around that now have distilleries and and had white whiskey and it actually was at um entry proof 125 proof because it's white dog you don't proof it down right right um so 
so I had those and and uh, at my table. And Rob Masters, who's a distiller in Colorado, uh, done a lot of consulting, built some really nice distilleries. He's at Family Jones now, really great, was who helped me, you know, originally just kind of show me a few things. And he he's who invited me to it and up there and um, tasting people. And they're like, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. And all of a sudden, uh, about five guys from Stranahan's walk in and I'm like, okay. And it's uh, Rob Deertrick, who is the uh, distiller for um, Blackened. And then uh, a few other guys and Eric Jett. And Eric Jett now <clears throat> is my uh, head distiller of 291. And they walked in and they started tasting it. And they got to the white dog, what we're drinking right now. And they were like, this is freaking amazing. This is the best white dog we've ever had. I'm like, you're pulling my leg. And they're like, nope. <laughs> you know, and, and Eric Jack picked it up. And he was like, um, wow, not in this one, but the, that one, buttered popcorn, cinnamon. He just kept going off on the notes that he, he smelled and taste. And so after that event, I... Um, I went back to Mike Bristol, Bristol Brewing Company, who's a friend that kind of helped me um, a little bit, helped me a little bit with the space and stuff like that. I went back to him and I said, I've, I met my first hire. And it took me three years, I think, um, to hire Eric Jett. I, um, I just was too small, didn't have a real business going yet. And once I did, um, I went, called him up. I had talked to him a few times, but um, he had left Stranahan's. He was in a hiatus and I asked him to start freelance mashing in and distilling for me. So he would drive down from Denver, mash in, go home. Uh, five days later, come down, we'd strip it. He'd stay the night and then we'd finish it. And that's how we started about nine years ago. Um, and a little, little less, but uh, he makes all the whiskey now. He has an amazing palate. Um, he's way better at, at, you know, smelling it, tasting it, understanding what his memory is to that. Um, with me, I'm a more, do I like it? Why don't I like it? You know, um, if you tell me to take a whiskey apart, I can't tell you whether I like it or not after that, because there's reasons I like it and there's reasons I don't. Um, but off, you know, one taste I can. But um, there's a lot of, you know, vegetable notes. Uh, um, there's cinnamon. I don't know. You guys tell me. You're better at it than I am. So. We've got, uh, you know, sweet butter, uh, buttered popcorn, sweet corn on the cob. Um, we've got um, buttered popcorn and lemon curd are some of the things that are coming in here. Uh, buttered popcorn, something else. Chinese um, five spice. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I've heard all those over these 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, so it, um, 101.7 proof. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm first time proofing whiskey, right? Yeah. You can't, you can't back up. You add too much water. You're yep. at that proof. Um, and, and so I'm trying to hit a hundred proof and I start adding water and, checking the proof and get to a point, add a little, check it. And it's 101.6. And I'm like, that's, that's close enough to hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's how much I knew. I, I mean, it's just as easy as to hit 101.6 as 100, but, but right. I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm not going below a hundred. So I left it that and literally like the next time I proofed it, it came out at 101.7 and I'm like, okay, it's staying there. That's the number. The, yeah. yeah. The bourbon is 90 proof for the 291 fresh and, and the, um, and the aged, uh, small batch is a hundred because now I can hit that no problem. So, but I just felt that I should leave it at that. It popped up close to the same two in a row and, I'm, I'm kind of superstitious that way. 
Okay. Well, let's give it a taste if you haven't done so already. Cheers, gang. First one of the night. Let's see what we got here. Please share tasting notes in the chat. And any questions? Yeah, put it. Yeah. Add add any questions out there. We'll jump in at any time. We can ask it for you on your behalf. No big deal. Mm. But, Michael, that is really good stuff. Really, really nice. Thank you. It warms you up just nicely. Um, It is you know, sweet, easy drinking. Um, you know, I, I, I like what you got going on here for sure. Thank you. So almost, almost cotton I, candy-ish, you know, even you mm-hmm. know, kind of, kind of notes to it. So when I first made this, I took it over bartender work next door friend that had been to a couple of the distilleries with me when I was starting, went through the whole process of me building the still and all that. And good friend, Nate Wyndham, he's in North Carolina mm-hmm. now. Mm -hmm. and he uh i took him the white dog over when it came off the still and we had already tasted the bourbon off the ambulic and then um and so i took the white dog over there and he was like oh my god hold on and he had a a white manhattan that he was making and he was using another white whiskey um that that is good whiskey um i forget the name of it i can see the label um and and he switched it out and made this amazing uh, white Manhattan with um, Lillet, uh, maraschino liqueur, uh, maraschino cherry, orange bitters. And it's a phenomenal drink. And um, I sold a lot of rye, uh, white rye with that. And, and it was really the first cocktail for, for that rye. Um, and, and it's just been, I love making it. Um, you know, early on, um, the big guys were around the time that I started, they were putting some rye or some white whiskeys out, um, just literally white dog bottling it. You know, Buffalo Trace had mash one and a 375. And yep. um, there was, you know, Jacob's Ghost and stuff like that. And, and a lot of the craft guys were bringing out some whites that just weren't that clean. And so it really hurt the start of like a white whiskey movement. It kind of stopped it. And um, excuse me, the nice thing right now is we're in that movement again. It's a revival of it and I love it. There's a um, couple of articles out about it and, and one just came out in American Whiskey Magazine that I'm really excited about um, talking about white whiskey and where we're headed. I really think it's a, you know, a, a, a spirit that can be used for a lot of things. And um, this one, we love making um, white dog tonics and um, it's phenomenal as, you know, instead of gin in a tonic um, with some lemon juice or lime juice and, and a little bit of, maraschino cherry juice so yeah good summer drink nice you've got some great notes coming in here so uh, people uh, anytime you get this many notes it's always a good sign i think you got the mint uh sweet with a very nice finish you got peppercorn tingle with cinnamon and butter a nice viscous mouthfeel buttered corn perhaps a little cedar on the palate uh butter uh, remains strong here uh then you've got the butter cream um when it was question about uh, make you know aging a minute, uh, that that's always that's interesting. But you have to do that to make to officially call it a rye, correct? So that's that's to, what was put on notes. Yeah, to call it a whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, but Eric Jett um, told me the other day that that's changed um, in the TTB. Now now you don't have to put white whiskey on oak. Um, okay. I haven't checked on that since he said it. I need to. Um, but yeah, we literally use the same barrel. And it's literally poured in, poured out, poured in, poured out, um, used barrel. Um, and and if you like take a used barrel and put white whiskey in there and leave it in there too long, I mean like five minutes, it, it will get color. Okay. So we dealt with that originally a little bit, and then we just kept using the same barrel. Yeah. And it, so Makes it doesn't sense. get color anymore. Yeah. Uh, oh, given Mr. But, Bills, yeah. I like it. Uh, yeah, so that's that's good. So 
That's uh, we our, one of our regulars. Uh, if he says he likes it, that's uh, that's as high as rating as you can get. And on okay. his behalf, Jason Wickle is, is saying that. Uh, before we try our next one, I've got a question for you, Michael, and that is about these things, the the staves. So tell us tell us about the Aspen staves. How this idea comes to you, and how it becomes such a signature, you know, uh, note in in your whiskey moving forward. Um, yeah. So that's the funny thing is because we just had the white. Uh, the white dog and the white dog has zero aspen to it mm -hmm. the only whiskey i make that has zero aspen to it um 291 fresh goes through a aspen charcoal filter um <clears throat> but what i what i wanted to do um was kind of stick to tradition you know and and finish whiskeys on something and but i also wanted um aspen on my label and so what what came together in my head was well there's aspen wood and why can't we why can't i do um you know charcoal filter with aspen charcoal instead of sugar maple so that's where it originally came from and then i went to aged whiskey and I was like, okay, I'm aging it. And people finish whiskey in barrels of, you know, port wine, things like that. Why can't I finish it on Aspen wood? And so I literally took some pieces of <coughs> Aspen. I had some whiskey, um, some of the white dog that I put into some chips, um, oak chips to see what it would taste like when it's, um, and this is really rudimentary, but what it will taste like in a barrel. And and all of us has had uh, whiskey that's put on chips and they it tastes dusty and, and not good. But you can you can get a little bit of a feeling of what it will taste like in a really nice barrel. So I had done that. I had it and I took um, some Aspen chips and had some in one mason jar and then just the, the regular whiskey um, aged on the chips and the other one. And Rode uh, went to Boulder with a friend. And while I was doing that, it's about an hour and a half, two hour drive, I was shaking it in that mason jar and got to Boulder and opened it up, tasted it in that mason jar and tasted the, the control and thought, okay, it's good, it, it works. You know, it's a very slight note. Um, that's the funny thing. A lot of people think my whiskey tastes so different than Kentucky because of the Aspen. It's not, um, it adds, it's definitely different. It's a very slight difference. Um, my whiskey tastes like it does because of the stills I've built, um, the ye yeast I use and the grain I use. But um, it was it was nice. And so I'm like, great. That's what I'm doing. And so all my whiskey aged um, is finished on Aspen staves. So if it's a single barrel barrel proof, we pop the bun, take those pe pieces of that Steve had toasted and put them in the barrel for about three weeks. Um, our small batch gets batched together and then we put the Aspen in there and sit on it for about three weeks and then bottle it. Yeah. Yeah, Emily sent me this with one of the samples one time, and I keep it around here all the time to show exactly what we mean. And now I even I've got to see the process. Uh, I was out there this past summer filming uh, a movie with you, and uh, we got the opportunity to see how this is done. And it's not, you know, sent out to this big company that processes all different kinds of wood every day, and this is just something that they do. No, it's it's your team in the back, literally with a Weber grill, uh, fired up, toast these things, you know, <laughs> let, let them cool down. It's it's really cool. I mean, I, I, I thought that was great, and that's, that's definitely going to be in the movie because it's just a fun thing that's unique to you guys thank you yeah um so a friend of mine makes those um he's made them for a long time so he and he's very precise i'm like wayne they just just chop them up and <laughs> split them and but right. that is not wayne so they they look really perfect and they're the same size every time i love him um and and so but does a very nice job and yeah, we just toast them on a Weber grill. Sometimes they get a little too toasted. That's okay. But um, and Steve, if you ever want to like know what that smell is or whatever, just put a lighter to it and burn it again. Okay. Okay. It'll yeah. It'll it'll re revitalize it, huh? It'll, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Well, tell us a little bit about the small batch. I, I'm nosing this thing right now. I, to me, 
I mean, I'm getting like cookies. It reminds me of, you know, mom around, uh, uh, you know, Christmas time. She bakes so many different types of cookies and things like that. I'm getting, I'm getting kind of that on the nose here. It's really, really solid. But tell us yeah, about this, of, the small batch. Yeah. Uh, baking spice. Um, yeah. So this is my flagship. Well, the small batch, the rye was my flagship. Um, when I started out, it went, the label was uh, 291 Colorado whiskey, um, single barrel, and then um, barrel proof. The labels have changed a little bit now just for efficiency. Um, so the small batch is um, 100 proof or 101.7 proof. Um, it um, is called small batch. We batch it together, but it, they wanted me to put rye on both of the rye labels. And I was like, okay, the proof down version, I'll, I'll call it 291 Colorado rye whiskey. I'm fine with that. But, but the uh, barrel proof of it is my whiskey. And that's where it stays as Colorado whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, they're the same Mashville, like, like, and I didn't talk about the white dog, but the Mashville of the white dog is, um, 61% malt rye, 39% corn. Thought I forgot that for a minute, <laughs> to be honest. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm getting old. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so it's the same mash bill, just aged in, in uh, American white oak virgin barrels to be a rye whiskey. Um, and it's, it's what I set out to make. So um, I really love this whiskey. A couple of notes here on the nose. You've got, uh, besides my cookies slash baking spice, you got sweet uh, bubble gum. Um, let's see, what else here? Spice cake, uh, spicy gingerbread cookies, you know, basic baking spice, creamy almond, gingerbread, ginger snap cookies, uh, slow poke candy, uh, brown sugar, yeah. some honey, so butterscotch. Yeah. Yeah, th this is good stuff. When, when you're getting, th that's why we love this type of whiskey. When you're getting that many different, it's not a one note type of nose. It's there's there's depth there, and that's that's exciting. Thank you. All yeah, right. so I don't I don't have small batch. I'm just going to make this small batch. Okay, <laughs> proof right. it down a little bit. All right. Well, uh, cheers, gang. Uh, let's try number cheers. two, and uh, please share your notes here in the in the chat. Oh man, so good. You could drink that all night, man. Whew, I love it. So I'm going to back up to the uh, white dog and, mm -hmm. and along with the rye uh, aged. Bloody Marys. If you drink Bloody Marys, okay. put, put my white dog in there. It'll, it's such a new experience. It's so good. You won't go back. Um, or just the rye whiskey. Um, mm -hmm. I like the barrel proof a little bit better because it stands up against all that um, juice, you know, right. tomato juice and stuff. But but the small batch works beautifully too. So yeah, that rye cuts that sweetness a little bit, mm -hmm. but also neat. You know, I drink my whiskey. None of my whiskeys are precious. I drink them all kinds of ways. Um, neat, um, lemonade, Mountain Dew you know, Bloody Marys, all kinds of ways. Right. Yeah. Depending on uh, what's going on. Sometimes uh, weather can play a factor, you know, in the summertime, yes. uh, that lemonade <laughs> drink sounds pretty darn good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, spicy cookies, one of the, the, the uh, tasting notes shared there. Uh, sorghum or molasses <laughs> on the tongue. Yeah. Mouthfeel is great on this too, Michael. This is just Thank really, you. really pleasant drinking experience. Uh, sassafras so and cream soda. So the mouthfeel, I really set out to make a heavy mouthfeel. I love mm -hmm. a heavy mouthfeel yep. in a whiskey. And and there's a, I mean, I pulled from all kinds of things. I read something about an ice cream company that did something different. And I was like, hmm, maybe I could try that with my whiskey and, um, in a, in a, out of the, in a different way and, and still in the whiskey world. And I believe that's what gives my whiskey the heavy mouth feel. So nice, um, nice spice uh, and good, good finish. Uh, great nose on the palate. Butterscotch, maple syrup, baking spice, 
Uh, Adina says it reminds of camping in the Rockies. So there you go. That's just kind of, yeah, yeah, the, kind of what you're you're aiming for for sure. Right. Right. Uh, watch out if you're drinking 291 and Mountain Dew. It's like a high proof energy drink. I could see that <laughs> from Emily there. Uh, yeah, the the Aspen does add. It just it it it's just so unique and so signature. I mean, that's what's so neat about your whiskey, Michael. I mean, I drink I don't know how many different whiskeys in a year. It's a lot, you know. Uh, there are various things I try and stuff like that. Not only am I drinking on a casual basis, I'm trying different things. People say it's, you know, 500, but I I, I venture to guess I can pick yours out, uh, you know, when I'm because you have a unique flavor profile that's incredible, and uh, yeah, that Aspen is really, really something special you got going on there. Thank you. Yeah, the, for me, the Aspen um, adds a little spice, a little smoke, um, mm -hmm. pushes the maple uh, I mean, pushes the caramel notes to maple a little more. Yeah. Um, that's that's what I get. Eric's got a whole another list of things. I mean, really detailed, which is awesome. But um, yeah, and it, it's very slight. But talking about the campfire in Colorado, I mean, when I early early starting tasting people on my whiskey in Colorado, and they, you know, and I didn't tell them aspen finished or you know they they had and they'd taste it at a tasting and they'd be like wow just i feel like i'm you know in colorado camping and it was just really funny to get that response um because they they the smoke the aspen smoke is very distinct in a good way you know mm -hmm. soft pretty way but but it um it's definitely distinct and, and you can taste it in my whiskey. So that right. was a really nice you know, thing to happen. Right. Could you make a barrel out of Aspen? Would, is, is that, would that would hold up in, in something like that? Would that be a special thing you ever did make like an Aspen barrel for, for something? I should. Right. I right. I, I, you're right. I so I so identify you with uh, you know the aspen yeah. is, but maybe for you know for a big uh, birthday celebration or something coming up it would be it would be interesting one 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 barrel made out of that that'd be that'd be fun. Yeah. Um I I'll, I'll talk to uh little Richard at the barrel mill who makes our oak barrels. Um he he's very interested in the aspen and stuff. So maybe maybe they can. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how it, I, it should bend. It, I mean, it's a hard wood, right? Um, but I don't know. Yeah, it might be worth a try for sure. He'll he'll do it to, just to try it. So right. Well, the next one that we're going to be trying is your your uh, maple syrup uh, one. So tell us. There's always a story with that. So tell us about <laughs> how you got started with that. I'm sure you know. You did you approach a maple syrup company? Did they approach you? How does all this get started? I should have Emily on Emily on for this one. Um, because it's her contact. Um, okay. They, they reached out and um, they, they, I'm not exact. I, I, I don't remember. Sorry. But uh, how they came across our whiskey, maybe Emily will type it in the notes. Okay. Um, but they were really interested and, and we're like, sure, we'll send you barrels. And so we sent them some barrels and they filled them up with maple syrup, sat on them for, I think four months or something like that. Okay. And, and dumped it and like fire, they were selling that uh, maple syrup. It, it's actually really good maple syrup. And um, so he had them and, and he, I think he had barrels that he was like, what am I going to do with these? Maybe I can send it back to them and they can, you know, put whiskey in it. So he reached out, Dean reached out and was like, can we, um, you want some of these barrels back to put whiskey in it and see what happens? And I was like, sure, why not? You know, <laughs> right. and, and they sent some back and um, Eric Jett filled them up and I, they come back, it's amazing, right? So they've been in those barrels um, for that time, the maple syrup's been in it and it seeps out. Um, and so there's just gigantic chunks of maple sugar stuck to the barrels. Really? So when they come in, it's really great. You go over there, chisel a piece off and suck on it for a while. <laughs> right, it's like candy, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's candy, it's yeah. really good. Actually, we should chip it all off and sell it. But <laughs> um, but so we put it in there and Eric Jett, you know, early on, a couple of months in goes, this is really good. 
And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, it's really different. And, and so what we do is the barrels go out to them. Um, I think they're rye and bourbon. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I made that decision a while ago, but, but then they come back and we, we uh, fill them with our rye whiskey. Um, we dump a barrel, keep it at the same proof, put it in there, let it sit for four months, three or four months, and then harvest it and bottle it. Excuse me. And um, so Eric's like, here, taste it. And I did, and I was like, that's pretty good. And a lot of you guys know that we do an experimental line called 291E. Um, mm -hmm. I love to experiment. We are on E11, comes out 11-11-22. Okay. So excited about that. Um, uh, trying to think what it is. Um, but so that comes out. And, and so we were working on E7 or 8. And... I think eight and, and Eric's like, I taste it. Eric's like, I don't know. I think, I don't know. It's, it's at least an E it could be just its own. <clears throat> and I tasted it and I was like, Oh yeah. It's, um, yeah, I just got a text message telling me what, what's coming out and I'll tell you, but, um, it, um, at four months, I tasted it and I was like, oh yeah, no, this is its own label. And so we had 11 SKUs at the time, meaning 11 different products. Um, and we, I was like, we're making a new SKU. So it's the first SKU in a long time. And so it's 291 M um, for the maple, not for Michael. Um, <laughs> And so we batch it and it's, it's just really different, really good. The E11 that's coming out was a, a bourbon that uh, our boiler broke. And so we had um, fermentation going on that we had to sit on for 30 days, super soured, came out. It's, it's really sweet, amazing whiskey, but that's a whole nother um, episode. But uh, that comes out. November 11th, um, 22. Okay. So, Excellent. We'll be on the lookout for that for sure. So uh, 291 yeah. M. Okay. Man, I, I tell you what, the notes coming in on, on the nose, stuff like waffles and, and uh, waffle batter and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's in people's heads, and then uh, and then the taste. I and I tell you, if you haven't try, tried this yet, cheers, gang. You gotta you gotta taste this. It's incredible, incredible. It so is. for a while it was a highly allocated and and I've been pushing Eric. I'm like, Eric, order more barrel or get more barrels back from Dean and um put a lot more rye whiskey in it so that we can keep it on the shelf all the time. Because it really um my understanding, I've I was told I've never been told that my whiskey's hit a secondary market until this came out. And they were like, oh, yeah, that, that's really hot on the secondary market. I don't know what that means. Um, but, I mean, I know where what it sort of means, but I don't know what they're selling for or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, we kind of, I want to make it more readily av available. So, And it's, what's your proof? What do you have? Uh, our proof for? is 119.2. One, one yeah, Boy, this is it's it's insanely good. I don't care what the scale is. Ten, it's ten out of ten. If it's a hundred, it's a hundred out of a hundred. If it's a thousand, it's a thousand out of a thousand. Michael, this is just amazing. You talk about incredible mouthfeel. You know, the maple syrup. Sometimes those things can be over mapley, where or overly sweet. This one's you know just it's it's whiskey. You're drinking whiskey with this nice subtle, uh, you know, hints of flavor. Man, it is good. I know you win a lot Thank of awards. I, I hope you're submitting this to some stuff. You're gonna, you're gonna win. You're gonna clean up with this thing, man. It's incredible. We do. Um, yeah. We do submit some, and and yeah, um, we do have a budget on awards, and Eric manages that, and mm -hmm. it's it's interesting. But um, we've, I think we have some submitted more than we, you know, in the past. 
mm-hmm. like it takes a year to get around those awards and stuff. But right. I agree, Steve. It's a really easy drinking, high proof whiskey. Um, friend of mine in LA um, sent some to a friend of his, someone he was seeing, dating, I don't know. And she doesn't drink whiskey. And he came back to me. He's like, oh my God, all she wants is, you know, 291 M. Right. So that, that was kind of funny. But yeah, um, it's, it's, the sugar, you know, as we well know, in spirit, sugar softens the proof and stuff like that. But at 120 or 119 proof, um, it's still high proof. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm loving this. Uh, Kathy throws out there that it would make a great old fashioned. And it would. And I, I, what I'll do is if Kathy gets a bottle, I'll drink mine neat. I'll go over to Kathy's house and she can uh, whip up some old fashions with hers. And I'll enjoy that for sure. Uh, <laughs> no doubt about it. It sounds, it sounds Count amazing. Me in. Yeah, 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 Kathy, we'll be stopping by. So <laughs> it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole crew here will be showing up, I think. Yeah. Jim was uh, yeah, Jim was thinking the same thing. Uh, Neil and Melanie called what, fall, fall Off the Porch good, which ours is, you drink it, you know, it's it's so good you drink it, you don't even realize until you fall off the porch how good it is. So, yeah. yeah. Um, the funny thing about that is, like, um, at the same time that we came out with it, and, and we didn't talk about it, and they didn't talk about it, there were a couple of whiskey company, companies that came out with a maple finish, and one of them was Widow Jane, Lisa Whitaker, Mm-hmm. Um, wicker and um, you know it's ama- it's amazing it's fun that even in the fashion world when when I was a photographer I or the creative world um, ideas float around right that's right this is my belief is that ideas float around and your brain grabs one and at the same time another brain in the world grabs it and that and what I relate that to is pop culture and things that are going on and things in your industry and so it influences you as a person in in a certain way and that can influence somebody else in a very similar way and that's that's where I feel two ideas come to um, come out at the same time is because it's just what's going on in the world influence creative people Mm hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is uh, definitely, you know, just an enjoyable pour and you know, mouthfeel everything. It just fires on all you. cylinders. So, yeah, every every box you want to check, it's 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 got it. And it's 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 great stuff. So it if works you're... really well in my 84 Dodge truck. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, Michael. Well, we've got one last one here. Yeah, this is uh, Colorado whiskey. It is uh, again Aspen Stave finish, of course, and this is uh, distilled from a rye malt mash and comes in at a very stout one forty point five. So, uh, of course, we love hazmat uh, within this group. So, uh, well, that's that's our fa- our favorite proof when you start getting sneaking up over that one forty. Good stuff to try. We we love ex- experimenting with that because. If you can find a good one uh, at, at that price, it's just, uh, you know, just incredible. So tell us a little bit about this one. So my bottle's half empty, not tonight, but um, <laughs> actually two thirds. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this is really the whiskey I set out to make. I love the high proof whiskey. Like I said, um, this is my flagship. Um, it, uh, 61% malt rye, 39% corn. Um, Emily's telling me you have a King of the Hill bottle. I don't have that bottle. <laughs> but um, King of the Hill for me is, or in the distillery, is when they're tasting barrels and and they taste them and one of them is really good. It's the King of the Hill. Mm-hmm. And it sits on that. You know, and we harvest that barrel and kind of save it for different reasons or whatever. And then another barrel comes along and we'll knock it off the hill, right? So there's a new king of the hill. Gotcha. But usually the high proof ones really, um, what's the, how many bottles are out of that on the side? What, do you have that? Does it say? 
Uh, uh, Justine has the bottles. She she sends us. Oh. If Justine can grab that and see if it says the number of bottles. If, if so. Um, yeah. But it's probably a low bottle count because it was probably a leaky barrel. Mm -hmm. um, we've found that when barrels are leaky, the whiskey is really good, which we don't, we don't change the price, but we are losing money. Um, but uh, I, I really, um, in 2018, uh, the rye whiskey won world's best rye from whiskey magazine. It's won many awards um, since and before um, Jim, the whiskey Bible um, gave it 94 points barrel number two, which was huge. That was in that 300 square foot space. Um, this is, yeah, this is my baby. I, I drink all my whiskeys all the time. I drink the bourbon sometimes. I drink the rye. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I really don't have favorite children, but this, this is what I, when I had a vision um, before I ever made whiskey, this is what I wanted. And, and this is it. So. Yeah. Emily's saying it was like 16 bottles, Michael. So yeah, just, you know, such <laughs> a small amount. Yeah. And, uh, and she had, a, had to go to Eric's secret hiding spot to grab it for us for this, for this group. So <laughs> we thank her for doing that's that. I mean, yeah. you are. Yeah. Yeah. We, we thank Emily for doing the hard work. Yeah. That's awesome. She, she's incredible. Yep. <laughs> she says, I'm always doing the hard work. That's the <laughs> damn truth. She crushes it. She yeah. is an amazing, um, uh, family member. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. This is nice. So well, let's try it. Yeah. Last question. one of the night. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, gang. Let's see what we got here. Let's talk about taste though. Oh man. So good. Thank it you. just, it just easy drinking warms up so nicely but not anywhere near what you think is 140 proof by any means. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's drinking maybe, you know, 115, 110, somewhere in there. So yeah, it, it'll get you a Heath bar says Jeff and Drizzy. So yeah, Heath, Heath nice. bars. That's a, that's a good call on that one. Mike gas camp. It'll hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. These will uh, proceed with caution when you're talking over 140 proof, you, you know, you, you have to manage yourself with these things. You gotta, gotta go easy. Oh, that is good. So, so good. Oh, damn. Mic drop. Such a great finish. Uh, Jason. Yeah. 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 Nice. Dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. 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 No doubt. No doubt. Da for sure. Dangerous for all kinds of reasons. Mm hmm Getting off the porch. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Re relationship. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Michael, tell us a little bit about, you know, that, that has been, because I hear it happens, you know, in Colorado with the, with the dry climate, um, you know, you do get you do get more that that uh, wander, uh, you know, above that that one forty. And is it something you guys find in your rickhouse from time to time? It is. So we don't have a traditional rickhouse. We have a warehouse, and we we palletize our barrels, mm -hmm. and it's just easier for a small distillery. And I would love a beautiful rickhouse, but I I would rather put whiskey in a barrel. So mm -hmm. that's that's where we stand. But um, it does the you know the the arid climate um, really sucks that water out of the barrel more yep. than the alcohol, and and so they it, they all our whiskey goes up in proof or most of it, and and it's a funny thing because excuse me where um, our seven thousand square foot space in between the three three hundred square foot and the 26,000, we were in there for seven years. And um, we, there were some glass doors and uh, garage doors in the back. And I love that I put them in, I wanted the light, being a photographer, I need light. And so I, um, we put a pallet back there, two pallets, um, nine barrels each, 18 barrels. And it sat back there and, Part of it was hit by sun for the whole time it sat there and part of it in the shade. And the bottom 
pallet. Um, there were nine barrels and it ranged. So entry proof was 125 <clears throat> and it ranged from 115 proof to 137 proof. It was wow. the exact same white yeah. dog put yeah. in the barrel. And, and we're talking 16 square feet. We're right. not talking, you know, special yeah, floors, layers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. that was eye-opening. I mean, mm-hmm. amazing. And, and that 137 proof was king of the hill for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's interesting as, you know, someone that hasn't been do- doing it forever, no family member, you know, um, t- for that realization. And so um, it's been, you know, that was really cool. And so, yes, our, we definitely, we definitely in Colorado, rye whiskey uh, does better in the arid climate. Um, we do our barrels, most of them, we know they're a certain age by whether they're 128 or 132 proof. Um, Laws Whiskey has won world's best rye whiskey a couple of times. We've won it once. Um, and and we go back and forth. You know, they win it. We're, we're second or whatever and vice versa. Um, so there's something about Colorado whiskey, rye whiskey, um, and and it's, it's a, we love it. So yeah, very nice, very nice. Well, what a uh, what a finish to uh, to our tasting tonight. I mean, really on a high note here. It just uh, so so good. You know, you're getting some uh, cinnamon rolls and uh, nutmeg mm-hmm. and. You know, a lot of a lot of good uh, notes there, and and it just the, the the talk about how easy it drinks. You know, like I said, the consensus looks like you know for that one, proof one, one fifteen. Yeah, for the proof, amazing, amazing. It's not hot. It's not hot. That's 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 what I don't like. I don't like a whiskey when I drink it. I'm like, oh, that's hot. Yeah, that this this drinks. You know, there, there's it's it's stout, but uh, uh, you know, it's 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 just nice. It's a pleasant, very pleasant drinking whiskey, which is there's it's definitely something said for that. So. Um, um, with that said, our anniversary was 10 years ago, or, sorry, a year ago for the 10th mm-hmm. anniversary. And we had a barrel that Eric and I filled, we bucketed 53 gallon barrel, um, hand bucketed. And it was a special, it was the rye malt mash, um, but we cooked down, we cook everything up. So water, add grain, raise the temp, add grain, raise the temp, boil. Yep. Yeah. Um, I took a Dave Pickerel um, class, class or, you know, seminar, and he talked about cooking down. So I came back and I'm like, I'm going to cook down. And so I cooked down the rye recipe <clears throat> and, and we put it in the barrel and the notes that came out of it were crazy, but we put it in there and, and 53 gallon and we kept, Eric and I kept tasting it. And there were points where it was good or sort of good and then not good. And over the years, and we got to a, a little bit of a year ago or so, or two years ago before the, the um, 10th anniversary, which was a year ago. And we tasted it and we're like, that's pretty good. We should release it for the 10th anniversary. So we did. And when we popped the bung on it, it was 149.7. <laughs> oh, we man. bottled it after the Aspen at 148.9. <laughs> and we got a 156 bottles. So not many bottles. Yeah. And talk about hazmat. But talk about a whiskey that does not drink at 150 proof. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a, that was amazing, and and we're you know putting up more. And my whole team thought about you know how old I thought about how old I was when I put it in the barrel. They were thinking about okay, if we put it in the barrel today, how old will I be at seven years from now? And that got them all worked up. And so we're putting a lot of barrels up. We're trying to stay on them a little longer, a lot longer than we do. So 
Nice. Well, on that note, I'd like to open it up for questions. Uh, this is an audience. You can uh, open up your mics. Feel free if you've got a question you'd like to ask Michael about the distillery, about his whiskeys, anything like that. I see a... Uh, uh, oh, there you go. There's there's the 11 right there in hand. Nice. Nice. Well, Steve, I, I'd like to ask, you know, just where are these available? Where am I going to find some of this okay. stuff? Okay. Where, where can you pick this up at, Michael? Where are you? He's in Minnesota. Hmm. Emily? Um, so... Online, you can buy um, some of our whiskey that'll be shipped to you. Um, I don't, certain states we can't ship to. Um, Understood. Yeah. So straight from, you, straight from your website? Yes, awesome. that is correct. Yep. Um, also, yeah. if you hit Emily up, Emily at, um, she's got a buy now link, but if you ask, Emily, um, Emily at distillery291.com. Um, she will help you find it as easily as you can. Yeah. Thank you. you, know. Thank you. Christmas is coming. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Emily says <laughs> they do ship. Minnesota is a state they ship to, so, Jeff. So you should be yeah. you should be good there, my friend. So Yeah, awesome. This this was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Special stuff. I, I love the I love the stories. I mean you're your passion, Thank your you. energy. That's, that's what makes these events so fun. But yeah. wow, just some great stuff. Yeah. One to four were, Thank you. were awesome. We've got so uh, two, hope, two, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I Michael. hope everybody enjoys it. I, I try to be energetic. I try, I tell this story a lot. I love this story, but on, on the flip side of it is I'm like, oh my God, I'm boring people. They don't want to hear my story. They don't. Want, so that's, Thank you to hear that. So, all right. What else do you guys want to know? Favorites. Just, favorites. What was your favorites on the night? I'm just letting everybody know we've got two uh, picks coming in the ABV barrel shop. If anybody missed that at the beginning, one, uh, one, some really significant cherry notes to it which uh which uh, uh we called the Terrytown pick which Terrytown uh we pulled that from the fact that that's where they make Luden's cough drops in Terrytown New York uh nice uh, cherry notes to it so and I, I that's always a favorite uh, of mine you get uh, cherry notes to a, a, a whiskey and then the other one was actually picked by Danny we talked about Danny at the top of the the show if anybody uh, doesn't know Danny a regular he actually picked it he had done all of our plumbing work he's a plumber by trade done all of our plumbing work at the shop and uh we let him pick because distillery 291 uh is his favorite we let him p pick one of the barrels himself so it's uh it's the plumber's pick so those two will be coming to the shop very soon very soon Steve, what are those do you do you know um what proof would ride uh with mash build or anything I, I, you know what? I don't remember. It's been a while since we picked them. It's, uh, that goes all the way back to the spring. Uh, and it took a while to get into the state and all that. I, I've forgotten that, but I will uh, I definitely provide all that uh, when it, when it comes in, we don't have it just yet, but it's soon. It's very, very soon. So, um, but yeah, I'll, uh, and of course, you know, you guys can, uh, can hold a bottle. You're most of your club members. So we, we hold bottles for you. And so, yeah. Cheers to yeah. Danny. A couple of cheers to Danny. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, cheers to Danny. For sure. Cheers to cheers to our friend Danny. He, scheduled to be on here tonight, of course, as you can imagine. So yeah. All right. What else you guys want to know? Any any questions about the distillery, about the whiskey? Michael's background. Again, just one of the most interesting people in the world of whiskey. So any any Thank questions? You. I mean, from from uh photography fashion and beauty <laughs> at the top of the game too i, I mean yeah yeah just, I mean, just yeah the new york f fashion photographer did you did you scroll through all the attendees to find out which ones were uh picture worthy or uh <laughs> <laughs> no no i left that back a long time ago okay all right all right he can still take an amazing picture though i mean he, he's a guy you know it's uh it's it's a that skill does not leave you michael so yeah it's uh you're still is, still good at what you do i, I love the, stories the, of, the, yeah, the just, i love stories of, go ahead sorry 
No, I'm just going to say I, I love stories of people following their passion. As a 55-year-old guy who's just trying to make it to retirement, it's like, you know, there's there's stuff out there that you love. Go get it. And get, I, I just love hearing what you did. Yeah. yeah thank you. Um, yeah, it, it's funny because Emily Philip Raleigh, Senior VP of Business Development, friend forever that sells all my wholesale whiskey. Emily sells all my retail whiskey. Um, they're amazing. And, and we were in Crest Butte eating pizza. Um, the, uh, I can't think of the name of the pizza place at the moment, but, um, and, and my pizza came out and it was beautiful, but I had forgotten to tell them because I was like, I want sausage, olives and mushroom, but, and olive oil, you know, base but I forgot cheese. So it came out and it was really beautiful <laughs> and, and really good. No cheese though. <laughs> nope. Zero cheese. And I took a picture of it and they looked at it and they're like, you know, you should be a photographer. And I'm like, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there, there have been a couple of moments in, in this whole thing where people say that and it's like, I was, I can take a picture. It doesn't matter what camera's in my hand. I can, I can, I mean, no ego here. Sorry, but I can take a picture. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about that. Any other questions? Is the, the only way to get the uh, hazmat is to visit. Well, yeah, it's hazmat. You can't really ship it. I mean, that's, that's, you know how that stuff is. Uh, well, I, was, I was thinking yeah. ground shipping still might be cheaper than the gas to get me from Louisiana <laughs> to Colorado. It goes <laughs> from flammable to combustible though. So, so they just won't, uh, it won't ship that stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's uh, tough. Yeah. It's too, too bad. So, so Michael, other than the Aspen barrel, do you have any ideas, any upcoming projects that you're going to do that you can tell us? Um, so I, I have a couple of the, um, it's funny because it seems like I've been talking about it forever. Um, so I have a whiskey, um, bad guy and it's a four grain weeded bourbon that was my, literally my third recipe, um, fourth, if you count one a, but, um, hmm. and, and, um, that came out, it's been amazing. It does really well. It's a really nice four grain weeded bourbon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so in my experimental issue or head, um, not issue, head, um, I was like, I've never heard of a four grain rye whiskey, let alone weeded rye whiskey. Wow. So I did a four grain rye whiskey weeded it's a lot to say um about a year ago and um the white dog came off the still and it to this day i have a bottle on my desk and it will if if you come to the distillery i will pour you a taste if i'm not there i will have somebody take the bottle off the off my desk and pour it for you um it's it's crazy white dog it's incredibly good i can't wait to taste it um aged um so there there are whiskeys put up that we do things eric jet really wants to do you know finished in port or some kind of wine barrel and stuff like that and i i, I kind of go okay but everybody's doing that and I have a problem with that a little bit because I just not I think it's great I think people do amazing jobs with that and but I I'm a little different in that way and would rather try different things um so but there we have an experimental batch that I put in some barrels and wasn't that different yet you know been in there for five or six months and i'm like fuck let's just leave it in it right um, 
you know, whiskey only gets barrel better in a barrel. Usually, I mean, it can get over oaked, but um, it was like let's leave it in there because they're old barrels. They're scotch doesn't ever get over oaked, so um, <laughs> just leave it in there. Let's see what happens. You know, a few years from now, it's incredibly hard to pull pour whiskey down the drain yeah it has to be really bad really wrong and and i think i've done that once um yeah. in 11 years i i yeah so the most amazing thing is is for me the um the e11 that's coming out November 11th um I think there's 400 bottles or something like that and to to think that your you know fermentation like like the notes of this fermentation made me think okay if we add one fermentation tank to every batch how many fermentation tanks do we have to age for a month right that was like like one of them has to age for a month. So you have to have four or five so that every week you have one that's in that batch of six, 30 days old because it's so freaking different and so good. So that's, that's how my brain works. Nice. I agree with you about the, the finishing. It seems that it's gone to such an extreme that it's almost more original not to finish. Um, right, and I I really love the the one here with the maple syrup barrel. I mean, that's just delicious. It really Thank is. You. It really is. Oh, nice. Get Evia uh, mail, which is cool. Um, any other questions for Michael? All right. Well, let's give him a round of applause. What a great job! Really a Thank fun night tonight. Uh, so tr got to try some great whiskey. Uh, all we went four for four. All were excellent. Uh, really good stuff, and really an amazing night. And uh, what a great story, as always, Michael. Always appreciate talking to you, my friend. Thank you, Steve, my friend. Um, and and you guys, a lot of faces that are here all the time supporting. I love it. Um, Steve does an amazing job, and and yep. the support to Helm is amazing. Cheers to that. You know. Cheers. Um, Cheers. Heck yeah. Oh, I love that. Hi, Ryan and Helm going mm -hmm. on so thank you guys i love being here um thank you steve cheers to danny cheers to danny yeah. one last one. cheers to danny yep all right guys well thank you so much have a great night for our at-home audience i'll turn off the recorder now i'll stick around if you just want to talk whiskey have any questions for me i'll be here on that note see you guys later bye, bye. bye. I'm here for a little while. All right. Okay, cool.